We're, I heard one statistic once, we're 6% of the market. I'm not sure if that's true, but generally if you look at the, um, the book market um, as 100%, about 50%, the majority actually, they say much more than 50%. So I'm not sure what it is, but let's just guess 60% is nonfiction. This is a guess, okay, guys? But the nonfiction market is considered larger than the fiction market. This is primarily driven by self help, diet books, um, um, but also by, by celebrity books. Hillary Clinton's book, or you know, whoever, whatever big um, celebrity has written a book this week. These are all nonfiction books. You know, the life of Jimmy, what's his name, the guy guitarist, or whatever. You know, things like that. Um, so, this is the the book market is nonfiction outsells fiction very handily. I'm not sure the exact percentage, but what's left over um, then children's outsells non uh, adults. Very handily. I'm not going to say 60%. We'll just say nonfiction is bigger than fiction. Okay? Children's outsells adult, adult quite handily. Children read more. Adults that read children's books will, or adults that read books will all read children's books too. Um, it's not a coincidence that a lot of the very big, huge, super bestsellers are children's books like Harry Potter, like Twilight, um, like, you know, all of these things. Um, children's outsells adult. All right? So what's left over, romance, outsells everything else <laughs> very handily, okay? Um, so the, the pie you can see is shrinking, all right? From what's left over, thrillers, outsell everything else together, uh, quite handily. And so after you go all the way down to here at the bottom, you have the niche genres. You have things like science fiction and fantasy, you have mystery, you have all of these sorts of things where we have our fan base, but we're not considered super huge. These are the behemoths in the publishing industries. Um, and everything else is good. There'll be some bestsellers in them, um, but I, I believe I talked about the, like, the difference between, um, between Wheel of Time and Harry Potter, right? Or Twilight. Wheel of Time is like the biggest thing in epic fantasy. Discounting um, George Martin, whose numbers I haven't seen since the HBO show took off, but let's just say, you know, in the last 20 years, it's been Wheel of Time, Wheel of Time. And a Wheel of Time book, you know, maybe sells a million copies, maybe five million um, in, in its early week, you know, its early. Um, it's early time, which sounds great to you until you find out that like Diary of the Wimpy Kids opening print one was like 35 million or something like that. Um, so it just, it, it's ridiculous. If you find the actual numbers, it's ridiculous how much smaller the king of our genre is than something like, you know, Hillary Clinton's books, like 10 million copies or something or like that. Or Dan Brown novels. Or Dan Brown novels, um, which are the thrillers, um, or the big romance novels, uh, or things like that. It is dwarf us. Um, so... So keep that in mind, yeah. How much do the sci-fi fantasy shrink when you take out like series books and uh... I'm not sure. Series outsell non-series. Um, but that's more about the established author name than anything else. Established authors. But that's that's to be expected, it's the brand. Um, it seems like increasingly like the children's market is composed of like fantastic stuff. It always has. So, I mean, so that's kind of science fiction <coughs> Children's market is not segregated by genre, it's segregated by age. If you go into the bookstore, almost always you will find that it's, it's grouped by age. It's not sci-fi fantasy in business terms. We're talking business today. It is children's. Different things. Okay? Yes? Jane, did you have a question? Oh, no. recently Barnes & Noble started splitting YA. Yeah, they started splitting YA because of the Twilight phenomenon, and they started doing YA... Um, romance, and I think they started doing like a YA thriller or something too. Or no, it was dystopian. Um, they, they do a, a, a genre for whatever's big. Um, paranormal romance, yeah. Paranormal romance, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, just so you know, those numbers that I was throwing out, these are ballparks. I'm not sure what they're exactly are. They're, but, you know, this is, this is how it works. So, in other words, science fiction fantasy, it, you children's people notice you're one of the behemoths. Because of that, breaking in as a new author 
is harder to do on your own. Um, it's a little more corporate. There is a lot more money going around. Um, the advances go a lot higher, but the, uh, we call, I call it variance. The variance is also much higher. The biggest books sell a lot more, and the littlest books go a lot lower than like an epic fantasy published by Tor, um, which doesn't go as high, but it has this small, dedicated fan base who, and this is changing again with the ebook stuff, but for a while they'd see the Tor symbol, this is the new epic fantasy by Tor, I'll go ahead and give that a try. Um, and so Elantra, you know, Elantra sold, sold 10,000 copies out of the gate. That wasn't me, um, that was the nice packaging, the Tor logo on it, and things like that, and hopefully some good word of mouth. But you know, the opening week, when Elantra sold 400 copies on Bookscan, that's really good. It doesn't sound good, but that's really good for a new author. That's 400 people in the nation picking up the book because of the Tor logo and the cover. Nobody bought that book because of, you know, because of me at that point. Um, and so you get this sort of little wavelength pattern. So children's hard to break into, but the, um, the highs are higher. What that means is in children, you almost always need an agent. <coughs> um, you can self-publish or you can go with an agent. And traditional sci-fi fantasy adult, a lot of the publishers are very open to new authors. Uh, this is because, you know, they're part of the fan community. They're all a bunch of super nerds who just get together and like books. Um, you can find them at conventions and things like this. You can sit down and chat with them, and they'll be socially awkward just like you are. Um, and everybody's happy. Um, and you can talk about your favorite books. You can talk about what you love. Um, and you can end up uh, saying, hey, can I send you my book? And they can end up reading it, and you can end up selling in sci-fi fantasy without the agent. It's, it's actually, I wouldn't say easy to do, but I would say it's equally easy to getting an agent. They're both hard, but they're, they're, they're both legitimate options. In children's, you don't have that option. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about, about the distinctions here. Um, the, difference, the, the distinction is the children's imprints of established sci-fi fantasy Publishers like Tor's imprint are still very approachable. So, for instance, if you go to um, Susan Chang, who's the editor of Core Teen um, or, Tor, or Starscape Tor's Middle Grade, um, she's a very good editor. She goes to the conventions. It's very easy to talk to, and she will just look at stuff unagented. Um, but you've got something with Susan? Met her at a convention. Um, I really like Susan. So, um, if you do that, you if you can find those editors, because Susan's a Tor editor. Um, she's under the Tor umbrella. Um, and you can find, you know, Kathleen Doherty, who's the publisher, of, uh, um, which is Tom Doherty's daughter, um, for Tor's children in print. You can actually talk to her and, you know, send something. She'll probably give it to Susan, but you know what I mean. Um, this is, the, they're very open and friendly. So that's, that's one way to keep in mind. Um, but um, you can do this in adult on your own. The thing that you're going to want to do is you want to become this yourself, okay? You want to be an expert on the publishing houses and an expert on the genre, the genre that you're publishing in. You want to do this on your own. I would strongly suggest that if you have any inkling to publishing in New York, you do this. If you're going to self-publish, you probably only need to start paying attention to this one, but it's probably still good for you to pay attention to this one. What you do to do this is you go and you start looking at all of the publishing houses which are consistently getting books in your local bookstore. Because once again, one of the main reasons to go traditional instead of doing it yourself is because they will get you that bookstore space, which is still about half to a little bit more depending on your genre of the market. Plus, um, statistics show, I read one today that said 40% of people who bought a book online had gone and looked at that book in a bookstore. Um, so, books in the bookstore are still a, a major deal, and that's why you're going.